Hi, this is Scott Free, your trusted mentor, advisor, and the coach for the candidate fast track system. This is the system that we provide to help candidate engineers, technologists, technicians to successfully complete TERs, TEOs, and the engineering report within six weeks without confusion and wasting time. So we've got this process that we follow, helping all our candidates identify the position in terms of their qualification and experience, their training to see where the gaps are, the pathway that they can follow based on the qualification and the training they have. They can either become engineers, technologists or technicians, and then we help them to uh, design a structure, report structure. We help them to align their experience with access requirements, and then we show them and coach them on how to write the content of the report. We review and assess their reports. We then uh, help them to submit a completed report that meets all the requirements. They get invited to the interview, then they can defend their report. Then when EXA is happy, they can then be registered. So this is the system we've developed to take all our candidates through it so that they can able to make sure they submit um, uh, winning reports. Right, so these are some of the candidates that we've worked with, we've assisted. These guys are the guys that followed all these processes that we've designed for them, and they're all registered. We've got Kosana Ngaba as a peer tech, the yellow spot we have highlighted the fast track system makes the process easy to follow why because we've got the steps to follow okay we don't just work haphazardly the guidance he offers on coming on compiling the engine report and preparation of program review is of a great help we've got monthly which is our uh, certificated engineer he said i tried on my own to do the reports without a mentor mr godfrey helped me to understand each step of the report writing process through coaching reviewing uh, my TEOs, TRs, and the engineer report helped me to organize my work experience and projects into clear logical roadmap and guided me through structure and writing specific and detailed report content. I achieved my extra professional registration within eight months. Godfrey assisted me through the coaching session with guidelines to prepare for interview presentation accurately, and I'm so happy to be registered as a professional engineer. He's now a certificated engineer. We've got um, Ivan. It says challenging. It was really challenging for me to align my work experience um, to uh, with the EXA 11. And that's what we do on step number five. We show you how to align that. All right. Uh, we've got um, Shivasa here. He says, you made the application and interview for registration as a PR tech uh, relatively smooth for me. And that is covered here on step number nine. Okay. And here we've got Busi. He says, he has been a good mentor, a referee during the registration period i wouldn't have made it without you like i say you know our job is to help you to identify all the steps and go through them and make sure that your report is a winning one we've got Tabo. the system really works saves a lot of time the whole system works saves a lot of time we know exactly I mean, before you can start your reports we need to identify all these things then once you identify them we know what we need to do and then we can assist you to get your reports together so in this video, I just want to cover outcome number five, which is the um, how to identify the impact of engineering activities. All right. So the first thing is important that you identify the people living in the community uh, with a different art, beliefs, social institute, okay, um, surrounding circumstance and influence include local government, people, NGO, organization, educational institution affected by the project, work or engineering activity. So it's important that you identify the people that are involved in the projects. Let's take, for example, you are doing a project in, um, in a rural area where people are doing farming. Uh, there's a dam where people are, you know, um, they are grazing stock, their cows and goats and everything. Their livestock is drinking in that water. You can't just go and put a, a, a project where um, maybe you are building an a oil plant. Because you need to approach these people and say, we're going to do a project and make them to understand what is the benefit of the project to them as a community, to their livestock and everything that is, is critical for their, for their lives. Okay. So the second thing is to meet the expectation by providing work opportunities and develop of local communities with different languages, ethnics. Okay. So we, when we build projects around communities, you know, as as, as, as project developers, it's important that we meet the expectation. When we create a project, the project must be beneficial to the people in that community or in the area where we are working. We need to help them to build schools, to build a clinic, 
to train them to have the skills so they can come work in the in the projects uh, when we are busy doing the project or even once we finish the project is in operational phase people can get jobs because they've been trained they've got the skills to to do so and the third thing that you need to consider is identify risks that may affect the communities and put mitigating mitigating plans to barricade and install warning signs temporary crossing alternative supplier bypass roads press release compensation paid to affected communities and families to achieve engineering work or project i've seen most of the project um stalled or even not proceeding because the the people that are doing the uh, engineering work in that areas you know they didn't identify all these risks so it's important i mean you take in 2020 here in south africa we did a project the the Houghton project one of the things that i remember about that project was uh, the, the the bombella joint venture partnership project uh, did a a, a, a how train a railway line through passing one of the areas in Mitre, then there was a houses in that in that area where the the, 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 the the rail needs to needs to be needs to be built and they had to negotiate with the owner okay and it it, it causes a lot of problem because the owner wanted a lot of money and the bombella joint venture project they wanted to offer a certain amount of money so these are the risks that you need to identify and then lastly, protect the local environment and the land from the impact of engineering work by barricading dangerous trenches, excavation, installing safety signs for dust, obstruction, noises, pollution, wildlife, demolition of structure. So here you can say I've put a picture. You know, if you put a plant like this, you can be careless as, as an engineering company or a projects developer to build a project that is going to die a, a, a cause problems and, and, and you split oil and you drain oil into the, the the water sources where the animals of the people are drinking or even where they fetch water. I've seen a lot of companies going to travel. That's why it's important in every project, you know, the environmental impact study is drafted, which is actually a document uh, that is a legal processor in which a project developer is required to provide environmental information to concerting bodies that this information can be used for better informed decisions making. Okay, so we're going to build a project. We need to involve the community. We need to explain to them what are the benefits for them, for their livestock. You know, how is it? How is it going to? Uh, how are we going to protect the environment? You know, by making sure that, you know, um, we don't we don't destroy the in environment. You know, sometimes we dig. Maybe one of the activities in the project is to put um, pipelines. You need to dig the ground. But you just need to make sure that once you have dug, you put the pipeline, you close it nicely so that the community can still able to use the land. All right. And then the other thing is um, important that the engineering activities, we actually put signs, you know, uh, that say this activity is, is going to be then uh, the, the next two days, we're going to be drilling, there will be a noise so that people are made aware of those things. So those are the assessments that we need to do when we do this kind of of, of, of work. So it's important that you understand as an engineer, technology technician, how does your engineering activity impact the community, impact the so their social life, their environment, and, 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 and all those uh, important things that you need to take into account. So your key document here is your environmental impact study, which needs to be done, approved by all stakeholders, the community leaders, the government, the local government, the engineering team, and make sure that it's clearly drafted and is giving you know people the hope that um, once the project is completed people will still benefit for that project okay so these are some of the tools that you can use um, you know you can create progress report next and reporting on how the project is doing having the process flow what are the steps that you are following the work breakdown structure what are the activities that you are doing at certain times for the project, your gun chart, you know, how long uh, some of these activities are going to take place, from which date to which date, your quality control plan, and how you're going to control quality to make sure that, as we have stated in your environmental impact study, that this is how you're going to protect the environment and the lives and the social life of people. Have a side project team, people that will be participating and working on that project. So it's very critical that we, we understand the impact of engineering activities. All right, if you want to know more about how we can help you, 
as a candidate engineer, as a candidate technologist, as a candidate technician, how to do your reports following the process that we've developed, we offer. You can click on this link, you can copy this link, or you can type it in your URL bar on your Google search, and then you can do this uh, pre-recorded uh, webinar, and then you can see in details how we are actually going to help you and assist you to write your TERs, your TEOs, and your engineering report, and ultimately put the total application form that meets access requirements for your professional registration. I will see you on the next training.